Upper Generation Peugeot 3008 feels like a strong statement of ambition from its manufacturer, having already impressed with its stylish design, high-quality build, and sophistication. This is especially true for the nearly 50,000 pounds all-electric E3008 model, which sets high expectations for the rest of the range. But now, let's focus on the more budget-friendly options. The traditional combustion engine versions of this car, without the E-prefix found in the electric variants, are priced more in line with what you'd expect for a mid-sized French SUV. There's also a plug-in hybrid set to arrive in the UK soon, with a starting price just over £40,000. Meanwhile, the mild hybrid version, which we're reviewing here, can be had for under £35,000. This mild hybrid is powered by Peugeot's well-known 1.2-liter turbocharged three-cylinder petrol engine, paired with an electric motor integrated into a six-speed EDSC6 dual-clutch automatic transmission. While it delivers a modest 134 brake horsepower compared to other models in the range, it could still be highly appealing for buyers looking for a compact SUV that's affordable, fuel-efficient, and user-friendly, potentially more so than its fully electric counterparts. From a visual standpoint, the 3008 and E3008 look nearly identical. Aside from the badge on the boot lid and slightly less pronounced wheel arches, which also lack the gloss finish on the hybrid, you'd be hard-pressed to tell them apart. You might also notice that the hybrid's tires are 10 millimeters narrower, which can be upgraded to all-season tires with Peugeot's 300 pounds advanced grip control option. Both versions of the car share the same body, design, and dimensions, measuring 4,542 millimeters in length and 1895 millimeters in width. This positions the 3008 squarely within the popular CSUV segment, competing with rivals like the Nissan Qashqai and Hyundai Tucson. Beneath the surface, the STLA medium architecture introduces some notable changes, which Stellantis plans to extend across all its midsize models. One key difference is that the hybrid version of the 3008 doesn't house the massive 98 kilowatt hour battery pack found in the E3008. The crash structures, however, remain the same. The need to meet stringent safety standards, particularly for battery protection, contributes to the hybrid version's platform, which adds over 100 kilograms compared to many competitors. The front suspension design remains largely unchanged, but the hybrid opts for a beam axle at the rear instead of the E3008's multi-link setup. The mild hybrid produces 134 brake horsepower, which falls short of the power output seen in key competitors like the Nissan Qashqai and Hyundai Tucson. Meanwhile, the upcoming plug-in hybrid will feature Stellantis' familiar 1.6-liter turbo PHEV powertrain, offering 192 brake horsepower in an electric range of 52 miles, with an attractive 8% company car tax rate in 2024-25. Inside, the 3008 truly shines. The materials are high quality and feel luxurious, even in the entry-level allure trim of the model we tested. Peugeot has successfully elevated its interior design and perceived quality beyond mainstream rivals, all while maintaining excellent usability. The car's standout feature is its 21-inch wraparound curved display, which combines a driver display and an infotainment touchscreen into one sleek unit atop the dashboard. While the graphics are busy and some fonts can be hard to read, the interface is user-friendly thanks to the eye toggles beneath the screen. These customizable shortcuts allow easy access to various functions, from heated seats to quick calls to your favorite contacts. Importantly, they're also right where they need to be in order to make sense of the car's wider ergonomic layout. Peugeot's iCockpit control layout has troubled us to various extents in previous iterations, but the 3008's high scuttle makes room to fit the car's displays and instruments in behind the steering wheel without displacing it downwards, and are entirely visible. The 3008's smallish steering will still takes a little getting used to, but its placement is nowhere near as problematic as on older Peugeot's. Comfort levels from the firm but supported driver's seat are good, as at adjustability and there's a general sense of airiness in the cabin, again helped by that material choice. Those in the back won't find the biggest car in the class, but even adults will be happy with the legroom and headroom. The rake's shape doesn't appear to have impacted passenger space, although it does eat into loading space in the boot, with bulkier items more tricky to find space for. 
The 3008 Hybrid's 1.2-liter mild hybrid powertrain featured briefly in the last generation 3008. It's a hybrid system that features a 22-brake horsepower electric motor integrated into a six-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission, driving the front wheels and primarily draws power from a 134-brake horsepower, 1.2-liter, three-cylinder turbo petrol engine. The system has no selectable EV mode, in contrast to other hybrid systems like Toyota's, instead determining on its own when it can run solely on the electric motor under lighter loads and that's mostly at low speeds. This drivetrain wasn't an instant hit when we drove it in the outgoing 3008, and so it proves again in this application in the new model. A couple of key issues are prevalent. It feels underpowered at times and lacks refinement when working hard, which it needs to do fairly regularly. The lack of power was an issue in the older car, and thus it remains, even more so, with an extra 0.2 seconds on the zero to 62 miles per hour time. That's down to the weight of the third generation 3008, which is almost 100 kilograms more than before. Around town, the hybrid system works quite well, being quiet and smooth, and requiring no particular allowance or thought to drive it well. In urban traffic, the combustion engine starts and stops quietly, and there are no funny, lumpy drivability quirks to the power delivery. But out of town, the powertrain tends to need more throttle than you think you should be applying to make only averagely brisk progress. And in providing it, you trigger plenty of revving that tells you how hard the engine is working. The 3008 sits at the less dynamic end of the compact SUV class. The drive is fine, comfortable and light through the controls for the most part, but with surprisingly little interest in engaging you at the wheel. The ride is most comfortable. It isolates you fairly well from the road, with the odd laps, but nor does it ever really send crunches through your spine or set your head tossing. Good ride comfort is certainly a little bit dependent on fitted wheel and tire. We tested a car on bigger wheels and standard summer rubber and were a little underwhelmed with the car's ride refinement. But back in the UK, on Peugeot's advanced grip control all-season tires, isolation was reasonably consistent. Don't look to the steering or handling for any involvement though. Like the ride, both are fine and predictable. They don't risk offending, but miss any opportunity to involve you in the process. At all times, the car conducts itself in a way that feels a little dulled and blunted by its way, though it remains just about precise enough not to attract particular criticism. Lithe and fleet of foot the 3008 is not, which is a shame when it looks so dynamic. We've seen mixed results from the 3000 an 8 hybrid on real-world efficiency. On our European first test, it struggled to get much beyond 40 miles per gallon. But back in the UK, 